Guys, it's the day after I filmed yesterday's video and I had the carburetor completely back on the machine and I was prepared to take it to the dealer and see if they could figure all this out. Uh, I went back and looked at the, the directions or the, the repair instructions for the engine and for the carb specifically and it turned out I missed a couple screws which we'll see if it makes a difference or not. Um, but I've already taken the solenoid off and I just wanted to show you. So you've got your, your, you know, your solenoid or solenoid here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first time around, all I did was take the solenoid off and spritz some carb cleaner down there. Well, it turns out that this piece can actually come out. And then farther in there, you've actually got a, uh, a screw that can be taken out and cleaned as well. Now I already did this last night, but I just wanted to show you guys Excuse me again. You know, so there is a passage down in there as well. And then finally, and you know, maybe this is where I'm just going farther than I should, I found this little plug. So you see where the screw is? There was this little plug, and the only reason I found the plug or the screw was because the plug was a touch loose. So this would be the low idle fuel screw. This is the high speed screw. And then uh, I think this is the screw you use to actually adjust the RPMs of the idle. But the way this screw is, so I've already taken this screw out as well, but I just wanted to show you, and we'll see if I got it right later. But where the screw is now, if I turn, you guys are on camera, right? If I turn, there's a half turn. There's one turn. And I'm bottoming out about there. So I would just, and you don't want to go too tight when you're bottoming out. So I just know that if I come to about here and go back half turn, one turn, that's where that screw should be. So now I can take this screw out all the way and there's a spring behind it and I can clean this passage as well. And again, guys, I am not an expert. I can't say whether this is gonna make things work better or if it's gonna make things work worse. But there's a very teeny tiny fine needle on this one. Um, so you gotta be careful not to put it back on too tight. And then there's a spring in there as well. So last night I ended up spritzing carb cleaner into these holes. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm really not sure where it went. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the top off of this carb one more time. I'm gonna spritz some carb cleaner in there and see where it comes out. And then, um, I'll be honest, the direction said not to spritz carb cleaner in these holes, and I'm not really sure why, that the direction said to use uh, compressed air. Um, but I'm gonna take the top off, spray some carb cleaner, spray some compressed air carefully with my safety glasses on, maybe even goggles to keep the stuff out of my eyes, and we'll see where we are from there. So uh, let's see if we can do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda zoom out a little bit. I'll be honest, uh, you know, this was fun the first day or two, but it's getting old now. So I'll zoom out a little bit and keep the camera rolling while I'm doing it, but I'm not sure how much detail we're gonna see in this one.
So the uh, the manual said you're only really supposed to use um, compressed air to clean these holes. So hopefully I didn't screw it up. But I just figure if we had uh, if we had bad gas in these things, there would. Um, you know, there would have to be some junk in there. So I can actually see daylight through the low speed one. I'm not really sure where this high speed one goes to, but uh, hopefully it's cleaner than it was. There's still a little bit of white gook on this, but I don't think that's going to affect the flow of gas. And then this little needle, I mean I can see daylight through this needle perfectly fine too, so, you know, again I'm not sure this is going to make any difference, but we'll give it a shot. So let's go ahead and put the top back on. And it's funny, I guess this little gasket on top gets, gets crushed or something whenever you do this. I think you almost want to have a bag of them so you can put a new one on every time. I'm just going to slap it together. But um, that gasket definitely, you know, was crushed a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll put this low speed screw in. The tip is nice and clean on that, still in one piece. Make sure we put the spring back on as well. So that's fully seated. I'm not going nuts with it. And that's pretty much where it was. So there's a half turn. And there's another half. So that should be good. And then this little piece of metal. sitting on top. I have no idea how you get that piece of metal out. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, it was loose already, I, I wouldn't have known to look under there for that screw. And then this is our high speed jet. So we'll go ahead and drop that in the hole. sure how tight that's supposed to be. So we'll go with snug. No need to break it. This thing that goes over here. And then the solenoid goes back on.
I cannot mess with this carburetor anymore, both because I've done everything and because my sanity may just, I might lose it. But uh, that's our best, that's as far as I can take it. I've gone done this three, four times. There's nothing more I can do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. And then I just wanna show you, my engine is a, it's a CH, is it CH, Kohler Horizontal? Yeah, it's a Kohler, it's a CH730. And I have the, the lifter noise these Kohler engines make real bad. So I went to uh, Tractor Supply yesterday and uh, I picked up some Kohler oil to see if that maybe helps with the, um, with the lifter noise. You know, I've been running Mobile One uh, 10W30 thinking that synthetic is better, but um, hopefully this Kohler oil will make a difference and uh, it would be so nice to have this machine not making that ridiculous lifter racket. But um, I will go ahead and put the carb on. I gotta finish changing my oil and we'll come back and, and we'll let you know how we're doing. Okay guys, let's, uh, let's fire up and see if she starts. And if she does start, let's see how well she runs. I did drain the carb, so it's gonna take a while for fuel to get up there. Okay guys, so I uh, got out and I ran it for a while and um, maybe it's marginally better but it's still just not there. It was maxing out around 3300 RPMs and it's still the, 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 the most noticeable thing for me is that full throttle if you move forward it starts to lag and I know it's hydraulic and there's going to be a little bit of a lag um, but there's more lag than I think there really should be and it just slowly dies down. And I'm really hoping I take this to the shop and the guys say it's you know just a governor setting and they can tweak it, no big deal. But you know, I'll be honest, uh, you know, just cleaning the carburetor was beyond my scope of normal stuff I do. Um, I've done it three, four times now and uh, it's, it's time to let someone that knows what they're doing uh, take over. So I will, um, I'll make sure I, you know, when I get it back to the shop, I'll make sure I put an update on where we are and what happened, and um, maybe we can all learn something from this. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.